What is going on everyone? Tutorial Tim here at Design Academy and today we're going to be talking about understanding layout in material design and we're going to go over some very uh, simple principles that we're going to be using throughout the entirety of this course moving forward and we're going to go over some examples and components and here I have a couple links so we're going to start off by um, going ahead and opening this link if you'd like to read through this information or you can just follow along with me I already have these links open and essentially material design in order to ensure consistency across all the platforms or environments and screen sizes that they design for they adhere to three simple principles um, ensuring that when you are implementing a layout that it is predictable consistent and responsive across all those platforms and here you can see those definitions so they ensure that they are predictable by using intuitive and predictable layouts with consistent ui regions and spatial organization by using these measurements here and of course uh, consistent layouts uh, while using the grids key lines and padding so we'll heavily be using grids and padding of course and of course uh, ensuring that these layouts are adaptive and they react to input from a user um, whether it's a device uh, or some other screen elements. So here you can see some of the baseline uh, measurements that Material uses and Material Design layouts are visually balanced and to achieve that balance most of their uh, com measurements or components when they're designed align to an 8 dip grid that is applied which aligns both spacing and it aligns to the overall layout as well and smaller com components such as icons or typography can align to a four dip grid and also think of that as four pixels so what is that exactly so if we go to figma we can go ahead and build a frame maybe we want to choose a generic macbook pro uh, screen layout so i just choose the macbook pro pro screen layout i'm going to go ahead and add a grid and typically most of the content aligns to an eight pixel grid or eight dip grid so i can do that by just changing having this grid type here for my layout grid and set that size to eight and that is my eight that's my baseline grid grid here set to eight dips or eight pixels you could say so there's an um eight here's your eight pixel grid here and you can start designing your whatever it is to the grid um, which is very essential and we will use that as needed and of course when you're designing several elements uh, say we have some text here this is very low level and not accurate just this is just to give you a general idea this typography of will of course align to the grid here and then I can ensure to space it by eight pixels as you can see here and then if I duplicate it ensure that's spaced by eight pixels and notice that when you're designing and you break down the spacing and as you design components it will always be divisible by eight or four so here we have uh, some measurements here starting from zero uh, and and then incrementing by four dips every time so zero four eight twelve all the way to 80 and more often than not you're going to be using the spacing up here in the top uh, spacing which is either set to 8 16 24 32 40 48 uh, 56 64 72 and 80 and every now and then you'll probably use four when you need to apply tighter spacing to smaller components such as icons or typography. So with that being covered, we'll go ahead and talk about those measurements in the, in the next page. Uh, but right before that, we're going to talk about the responsive lid grid out. So Material Design's responsive layout grid is an overarching guide to the placement of components and elements so that they uh, adapt to screen sizes and orientation, ensuring consistency across layouts and the three things that they implement in their responsive grid layout is of course columns gutters and margins so here you can see that uh, margins are to the very far right and very far left of the screen in this in this green color here and then we have our columns which are this uh, shade of red here that's not red i must be colorblind so i apologize and that is our column labeled there and then our gutters of course is the spacing in between the columns um, which are not on the far right and far left of the screen, which are the, of course, margins. So I'm going to actually build an example of that out in Figma here really quick. So we have this 8-dip um, baseline grid here. So I'm just going to label that frame. So we have that 8-dip baseline grid. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. It's on a MacBook Pro screen. 
and I'm gonna go ahead and create a responsive grid layout. I'm gonna remove this. I could keep this if I wanted to, add another grid layout and change that to columns. And what we can do is ensure that this type of grid is set to stretch because that means it will be a responsive layout grid or you could call it adaptive or you could say fluid. That is another common term. I'm gonna add 12 columns here or we could check how many columns were implemented in this grid. Three, six, eight columns. It looks like they're potentially designing for a tablet. Here we have eight grids. You'll notice that all the columns here are set to red and I can change the opacity of that to really point that out. So we have eight columns here, but we don't actually have margins yet. This, uh, we're, what we're trying to achieve here is add these uh, margins, which are labeled in green here. And we'll set that to 24 pixels. So we have the margin parameter in Figma there. So I've set that 24 pixels and you notice that it kind of squished those columns in. So I've squished those columns in. And now I'm gonna change the gutter from the default 20 pixels or points uh, to 16, because uh, that is commonly used as well. And it also perfectly aligns with our, our grid, our eight pixel baseline grid as well. So that is an example of how to build this out. But now I'm gonna actually stretch the screen because this is responsive. So you'll notice as I move this frame, essentially the components you design that will be attached um, on the screen and adhering to the column layout or the grid layout on the screen will also be responsive as you as you start to uh, stretch it around, because as you all know, we have web browsers and we can stretch those around and it becomes responsive. Figma itself, the tool is responsive as you can see, but um, that is an example there, a responsive grid layout. So now that we have that specified, that is fantastic. We'll go ahead and start to see how the measurements are implemented in components. So in our in our exercise file, if we click on app bar components, we can go ahead and open that link, which will open a, a material design page. And if you go ahead and follow me and click on the specs here in the contents category, uh, you'll see that we have a bunch of bottom app bars, which are mobile only components. And what the important thing to get out of this is that we're seeing a bunch of specs provided on how to design these elements. So here you can see that this is this hamburger menu is wrapped in a 24 by 24 frame, and we have a floating action button that is set to 56 by 56 uh, dips uh, in width and height, uh, which utilizes elevation on the Z index to rise above this bottom app bar, as you can see here. And then you can see the spacing between these icons as well is set to 24 dips, and then it has some padding, or you could say margins on the right set to 16 dips and it, the height of, the, of these elements, which are these icons, are centered within this uh, bottom app bar, and the height of that is set to 24 dips. So there's some measurements there, and you can continue to scroll down and view other variations of this um, floating action button. As you can see here, there are other variations with more specifications provided here, so there's eight dips between this floating action button and the white space there to the bottom app bar background. Um, again, more, and notice that all of this is divisible by eight or four. Uh, so understanding that this is all very consistent at, at a very low level. So it all starts from the ground up, or you could say a very primitive level, as these are primitive, such as these icons, everything's divisible by eight or four. And also the spacing amongst all these elements is divisible by eight or four and as well as the sizing of other components that are overlaid on top of this bottom app bar, which is fantastic and a great source of information for you to soak through. And we'll be getting into this very much soon. And that is all I have for you in understanding layouts, and I'll catch you in the next one.